welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and today we're going to install a Maxi Torquerite uh, power collet attachment on the uh, on the Precision Matthews mill there. And I've already played around with the pieces a little bit before you guys got here. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, I'm, I've got the well, let me just show you what's going on. You guys, some of you guys said when I gave you the tour that I didn't show you where the uh, the scales were for the DRO. So let me show you that. Right there is the z-axis scale running up the side of the the knee, because you know the knee is the main z-axis moving part. All right. Now we'll go take a look at the other stuff. Okay, back here on the back side of the of the mill table is the x-axis and the y-axis is visible right down there also bolted on to the to the knee where it can uh, catch movement coming back and forth okay now then let's get back to the other stuff yesterday not yesterday no Sunday this previous Sunday which was uh, well it was yesterday <laughs> now that I think about it uh, it was the steel challenge, the monthly steel challenge at my shooting club, and I got my best score ever. I've been trying for a long time to get below 70 seconds, and this month I got down to 68.09. Now I've got to raise my sights higher, so to speak, or rather lower, and try for 62 and then below 60. I mean, it's possible there's young guys shooting below 60, and uh, they're there were five of them, I think. No, four of them this Sunday that were below 60 seconds. And then there were six of us in the 60 second range. So things are improving. All right. Okay. Back to installing the uh, power collet. Now what we have here are two drawbars. And uh, this is the one that comes with the mill. And this shiny one is the one that comes with the, uh, the uh, torque right. I think that's the name of it, yeah, Torque Right. That's the name, Torque Right. All right, so anyway, I read the book, believe it or not, and in the book, they show you a little picture here of the uh, top of the mill head and how that the shoulder on this uh, drawbar has to be 50 thousandths below the top and how you measure from this end to this other end on the drawbar to make sure that they're, they're the same. Okay, so this thing has a um, has a bushing that goes on it, and it's about this long. And in fact, they measured the same from the end of the threads up to the bottom of the bushing. The bushing's in the head right now. Like I say, I <laughs> I fooled around with it a bit before you guys got here. So, and I put the put the draw bar in there and I measured and everything and I'm 50 thousandths below the top of the uh, it says B, uh, B equal 18 point anyway uh, I'm going to oil this thing up or grease it up I've got some Valvoline here I'm going to grease it up and put it back in there and then we'll put the power head on it and after that we will have to drill some holes to mount the uh, the uh, regulator and the air filter and they've already shown me a place to put the um, to put their collet thing but that happens to be right where I've got the power switch for this thing you know that's right up there and that spot's already taken so I gotta figure out the exact right spot you know to, to put the little push buttons for tightening and loosening the drawbar. All right, so I'm going to let you guys take a little nap while I reposition everything. All right, so anyway, I got this nice Valvoline, and I'll just get me a handful of it and smear it all over this uh, drawbar, so it'll be all nice and greasy and maybe avoid unnecessary wear or unnecessary rust and 
all that sort of thing. I don't know what metal it's made out of, but so far most all the metals I've had experience with have at some point rusted, unless they were stainless. Some stainless will even get discolored somewhat. All right, so now that I've got this stuff all over my hand, it looks kind of like bloody, doesn't it? Yeah, I've got to clean my hand up and then I'll get on top of the machine and we'll show you what's up there. Now then, according to the instructions, I can remove these three screws from the bearing cap. You know, pardon me, I'm handheld. And replace them with three longer screws that are included in the, in the package. So, I'm going to take out these three screws and locate the three that are longer. Bring the power head up here and we'll put the little booger in. You know, I'll try to remember to put the drawbar in there also. Now when I said the, the drawbar had to be 50 thousandths below the top of the bearing spacer, I meant that shoulder right there where my thumb's at, that shoulder there had to be 50 thousandths. Now I'm assuming they mean that's a minimum clearance, but it's just a little bit more below and uh, I think that uh, and it's not too far below, but it's it's the at least fifty thousandths plus a little bit. So I'm assuming they intended the fifty thousandths to be a minimum amount for clearance. All right, so we take out the three short ones and replace them with the the three uh, long ones right there. It's hard to know which way you guys can see there, but. All right, that's the third short one. There's the three long ones. Double check the thread. Yeah, that's the thread. Looks like it's the right length. So now I'll get the power head, and bring it up here, and see how it fits. I'm calling it the power head. I don't know what they call it. I don't remember what they call it in the book. But it's the thing that makes it work. How's that? I'm going to set it right over that. So far it's looking pretty good. Screws in. There's three, three nice, nicely located slots. Put this other screw in here. There we go. All right, while I screw this down, I'm going to let you guys take a little nap. Now, you see this neat little fitting here? This is where you can shove a, an air hose in there. And if you want to remove the air hose, you pull this thing backwards like that. You can see it goes in, and that'll let loose of the hose, and you can take it out. The first time I ever saw one of these, I thought that... Uh, <laughs> I thought it was a, dirt, a dust plug to keep the dirt out of there, and I pried it out. Totally ruined the fitting. Such is the, the fruits of ignorance. Okay, away we go again. Back to sleep. Well, their logo is kind of around the side after I read it on there like that, but there we are. That should be all the really hard fastening of this thing. This piece right here goes up. This right here goes up and down to make contact with the drawbar, and uh, I'm assuming that it's lined up right. It seems to be. So now I've got to get the the regulator and the little valve controls and figure out where to put everything. Okay, so what we have here is the power feed selector for the. Uh, uh, spindle and uh, our quill whatever and this is where that uh, the, that the torque rod fellows had envisioned to me mounting that switch but as you can see we've already got a switch there an electrical switch so I fooled around with this and it can be turned sideways like this and still fit on there and this is the only position where that will interfere any at all. It doesn't touch it, but it will get in the way. So, 
nevertheless, it, it won't stop either thing from working, so I'll just go ahead and use that spot. All right, let me go ahead and put some screws in here, and then we'll hang everything like it's supposed to go. And they, of course, thoughtfully provided longer screws for this spot. Not a perfect solution, but definitely workable. And at this point, I'm happy with workable. All right, back to steep while I screw it all together. All right, as you can see, when I move this up to here, there's no interference with these two buttons. So I think this will work out to put them under here. I think run the hoses out the back and now this will be the supply and these two will go to the the thing that's on the top. Okay. So let me get a wrench and tighten this thing down. I have to reach around behind here to tighten the little nuts. So, that's on there pretty nice and tight. Now to get the, uh, the hose and hook it up to the top and bring it down here. So, back to sleep. Well, I looked through the book again and I didn't see anything to tell me which one up there on the top on the power unit part of the thing is to which one is in and which one's out. So, I just put them on there and uh, run them down here and if it goes the wrong way I can reverse the hoses down here on the on the switch. Let's go around the front of that and see what it looks like from the front. Alright so there's the air switch or the uh, collet. One button is in and one button is out. I think this one is this one says in, this one says out. So I'm assuming they'll both stick out when I turn the air pressure on, which is still a ways away. I've got to mount the the, the uh, filter and air filter and the air regulator somewhere back on the, the ram back there. Uh, somewhere probably near the Precision Matthews tag so that it'll be up above anything if I move the ram in, in and out. Seemed like a good idea, so let me get all the parts and stuff and we'll mark that and drill a couple holes and tap some threads and we'll be in business. The first thing I did was to plug in what's left of the hose so that I'll be sure to know how far back I can go with that uh, regulator. And uh, that gives me quite a lot of opportunities, uh, so that means Having a bunch of opportunities means I'm going to have to do a lot of thinking. That's really rough for us rednecks, you know that. So I'm going to put you all to sleep while I try to think. Well, being a lazy redneck, I decided that there was already a hole down there. Now this thing's made to have two screws to hold it on. There was just one hole with a screw in it, so I, re I put it in that one, and it's being held on by one screw which I think probably will work out and if it doesn't I can drill another hole in that little door and thread it and it'll still work but now it's connected runs up there to the you know to the little switch on the valve and all I got to do now is get some air and we'll see if I've got it hooked up to work the right direction oh one other little job the, the second little container on there for oil to lubricate the, the mechanism on top. I've got to fill that with oil. Alright, I've connected an air hose. I've got the, the thing cranked up pretty good. 
it said to set the air pressure on 90 pounds so I'm going to ease over there while you guys are watching and see if I really did hit 90 pounds that's going to be right close to the yeah you got it it's about 92 so I think that's good enough that's my air pressure does about 115 somewhere in there so time it gets over here it may not be quite that much pressure but that's uh, one of the instructions was to operate the, the nor the quill where this thing couldn't get hold of the of the uh, drawbar and operate it in one second burst until I saw seven drops of oil in this little guy you can see the oil right here this is the indicator in the adjuster and then it said to turn it back around to two so I've put seven drops of oil through there by activating the air tool now then we'll go around to where the quill is we'll raise the quill up to where it makes contact hopefully and we'll put something in there and see if the power draw bar really works alright we've got this nice big drill chuck and we're going to come over here and loosen the quill and run it back up. Find the little key in here. Let's slide this guy in. I know the key's in there somewhere. There we go. Alright, let's see if we can't, uh, can't tighten her down. Feels nice and tight. There we are. Now, and I've got the electricity connected. And there we go. So, finally, I'm up to just about the spot where uh, where I start to make something with it. I've still got to level it up. I've got a a bubble around here somewhere to put on the table and I'll shim the bottom and get it leveled up. I can see that it's going to be kind of a mess keeping it clean because that, that whale drips down there. Of course I guess it was never meant to be a clean machine in the first place. It was just meant to be well oiled. Nevertheless that's I'll have to get some kind of absorbent to soak up all that oil as it goes dripping down. Alright let's uh We'll see if we got some kind of a joke. That's the end of this video. Can you believe that? I got the hoses on the right way first time around and they weren't even marked up on the top to tell me which was in and out. Talk about redneck luck. The other day I was talking to Bubba's uncle. His name's Bubba. I mean, it's a family name, you know, Bubba and Uncle Bubba. And, you know, anyway, so... Uh, you know, and there he was all homeless, you know, and down and out. And uh, I asked him, I said, uh, how'd you wind up like this, you know? And he says, well, this is up till last week. I still had it all. He said, I had plenty to eat. My clothes were washed and pressed. I had a roof over my head. I had TV and the Internet. Went to the gym, the pool, the library. I was working on my MBA online. I had no bills and no debt. I even had full medical and dental coverage. I said, well, what the heck happened to you, man? I, you know, I was feeling pretty sorry for him. I said, just what happened? Was it drugs, alcohol, divorce? No, no, nothing like that, he said. He says, I just got out of prison. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember... Keep on keeping on. Bye now.